Welcome to the Global Village's new video on the new Turkish Long Range Air Defense System. I received many requests from our viewers to make a video on this topic, so here we are now. Turkey is one of the few developed countries that has a robust defense industry. But not having the Long Range Air Defense Systems is its biggest weakness. Turkey doesn't have an effective Long Range Air Defense System so far, Yes they did acquired a few batteries of S-400 air defense system from Russia which is very lethal. But just a few batteries cannot provide air defense umbrella to entire Turkey. Turkey needed an air defense system with which they could protect its territory from hostile projectiles. While currently apart from F-16s, a few batteries of S-400 and a dozen or so mediocre short-range low-altitude systems they had nothing else to protect their airspace with. Turkey desperately needed to fill the gap in their airspace with a state-of-the-art long-range air defense system. So two Turkish defense giants named Aselsan and Rocketsan answered the call. They started work on Turkish national air defense system named Hissar, means fortress. Aselsan and Rocketsan have already developed Hissar A and Hissar O air defense systems. Hissar A which is a low-altitude air defense system has a range of 15 to 20 kilometers. It has achieved 100 success rate in testing phase against high-speed projectiles. Turkey has already inducted the Hissar a low-altitude short-range air defense system to its armed forces. While the Hissar O is an intermediate-range medium-altitude air defense system which is currently in testing phase, it is expected to be delivered to the armed forces in mid-2021. But it's the long-range and high-altitude air defense system which Turkey needs the most. So Turkish defense companies such as Aselsan and Rocketsan along with many other firms working on the Hisar U long-range air defense system in 2018. The Hisar air defense systems consists of a layered structure ranging from low altitude and short range, to high altitude and long range radars and missiles. Each system in the Hisar air defense family has its own advantages. The Hissar A for example, is primarily designed to shoot down cruise missiles, while the medium-range Hissar O is good against gunships and jets that provides close air support to infantry units on the ground. Whereas the Hissar U which has range of over 150 km, can shoot down ballistic missiles and any other flying object including the fifth generation stealth fighter jets. Once deployed in full strength it will be an unbreachable air defense umbrella which will cover entire of Turkey all the way from eastern Mediterranean to Black Sea. The long-range variant of Hissar system will use missiles with dual pulse engine. One engine in the bottom section while the other one near the warhead. The engine in the bottom section, which will power the missile to certain altitude and then it will leave. While the second engine will allows it to maneuver in the air. The reason this is used is that if you install everything on a single engine, its performance will be greatly reduced. Because the single engine missile use most of its power in trying to lift the missile from ground to air which does not leave any power for missile to maneuver once it's in the air. This means, with single engine missiles, you can't shoot down modern cruise missiles as they can change its trajectory in mid-air. The second important aspect for any air defense system is its guidance systems. The missile which is developed by Rocketson for the Hissar U long-range air defense system has both active radar guidance as well as infrared track and target guidance system. This makes the missile very capable as it will be able to intercept and eliminate projectiles even it's being targeted by enemy jammers. That is what makes the Hissar U air defense system so effective and lethal, it will be able to deter both maneuverable cruise missiles as well as fast-moving ballistic missiles. Some might think why Turkey needs Hisar U long-range air defense system in the first place when they already have the S-400 long-range air defense system. The answer is very simple. Actually Turkey have very limited number of batteries of S-400 air defense system. They placed those batteries in three end zones in Turkish territory, but they are not enough. As hostile cruise missiles can bypass those areas which are protected by the S-400. And Turkey cannot afford to buy so many S-400 batteries to protect each and every corner, as S-400 is very expensive and its export variant is not as much effective as domestically built Hisar U could be. Although the Hisar U air defense system is a long range and provides protection against cruise and ballistic missiles, but can it provides protection against the intercontinental missiles that carries nuclear or conventional warhead? 
Well, the answer is no. Because 150 km range is not enough if you want to stop the intercontinental missile. That's where the S-400 air defense system comes into play, as it has a range of up to 400 km, more than twice the range of Hisaryu. I think, Turkey will surely be eyeing for such a system once the Hisaryu air defense system completes. But that's the topic for another time. Currently Turkey is using its F-16 fleet in air defense role, which increases its maintenance costs and reduces its service ceiling. It's a big problem for Turkey. After the deployment of Hisaryu air defense system, it will take the role of F-16 as air defense umbrella. Thus the service ceiling of F-16 fleet will be increased while maintenance costs will be reduced greatly. And suddenly Turkey will have more F-16s available, which will increase its offensive capabilities. The last thing I want to talk about is the integration of the Hisar air defense system. Apart from the station vehicles, we can see that it is connected to the command and control center through the Link 16 system. This means that it can work directly with the radars in the Turkish destroyers and frigates. If Turkey builds its own VLS system for ships, then it can be compatible with them as well. So it looks like the Turkish TF-2000 destroyer will be able to operate Hisayu missiles. It's easier to integrate into the sea platforms once they finish the land version of the missile. I would like to point out that a TF-2000 destroyer with these missiles can lock down the entire eastern Mediterranean airspace. If necessary, they can block planes and missiles in their tracks in eastern Mediterranean before they can even get close to Turkish airspace. Since Turkey is surrounded by seas from three sides, they must take advantage of this and create an integrated air defense network. Turkey's top rival in terms of geopolitics is Greece, if a war broke out between Greece and Turkey, it will put a lot of stress on the Turkish Air Force and even if they are able to establish air superiority, it will deplete Turkish Air Force to almost a non-existent one, because the Turkish Air Force will be used in both offensive and defensive.